Hello, folks. Uh, thanks for taking a look at today's blog. Uh, what we're going to be covering today is using ST10 uh, to work with some STL files. Uh, we had the ability to open STLs in previous versions, but that was all we could do is open them and look at them. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and open this up, and uh, let's take a look at some of the things we can do. So now we actually have some manipulation of the geometry. Uh, you know, we're again, we're in synchronous. Uh, if you wanted to use some synchronous tools to, uh, to you know, push, push your geometry around, we can obviously do that. Uh, and, but I want to, what I want you to note is this is an STL file uh, by expand this design body. I you notice we have design mesh body. Maybe a little hard to see there. So zoom that up. All right. So what you're going to have is this design mesh body, and you're going to have a special icon. Uh, so this is new for STLs. You have this little icon here that signifies a mesh body. All right. So what? Am I referring to as a mesh body? All right, so when you bring in an STL, STLs are faceted geometry. Uh, so they are nothing more than just thousands of little triangles that uh, replicate, excuse me, replicate a solid surface. All right, so that's why synchronous necessarily, if you want to come over here and, you know, grab a face like you normally would, well, it, it doesn't do that. It's easy to do as a single body. All right, so that's not workable. Uh, but we do have some ability to uh, delete features and or add features into this. So let's go ahead and uh, start that off. So let's go ahead and get rid of some features that I don't want. I'm going to come over under this reverse engineering tab. Uh, something to keep note of if I toggle over to ordered. So for all those ordered users uh, working with SDLs, you're kind of out of luck. There is no reverse engineering in the ordered world. Uh, there is in the synchronous world. So... Let's go ahead and uh, show you what we can do. All right, so we have that part copy here, and let's go and delete some mesh. All right, so we can do mesh body or mesh facets. If I do a mesh, basically that's going to grab the entire body because that's one solid mesh. So I'm going to go ahead and say, give me some individual facets. And I want to do box selects, box selection, or brush selection. I'm going to use a brush selection here. We want to get this inside pocket. So what I'm going to do is drag that little uh, dot across the surface, and you can see it's painting kind of the area that I want to grab. So I'll just keep grabbing all these little mesh triangles. And set that. And of course that gets rid of that. Oops. Yeah, undo that. I uh, inadvertently grabbed some geometry that I wasn't really paying attention on. Alright. Redo that. Uh, sorry about that. Let me do that a little more carefully this time. To make sure I don't. Oops. Again, like I'm doing there. So we hit shift to deselect that. Or excuse me, control will get rid of that selection in case you make an error in selection. Last. Yep. I think I missed a sliver there. Yep. All right. So let's rotate this around. And again, I got a little area here. So control. To deselect that, and I have nothing else selected. All right, so I'm good there. Go there. Let's go ahead and accept that. All right, something that I've noticed uh, I, when I try to do this next step, fill holes. Uh, what I found is it'll try to fill the holes, and it'll list all the holes in here. So if you don't get a watertight SDL, uh, you pretty much can't do anything with it because it's not savable or not printable. Uh, it has to be a watertight geometry. So if I just say OK, some holes can now be filled to fill that bottom one, but not the top one. So, uh, so let's do something else before we do that. Let's change the geometry at the top. Let's get rid of some more geometry. So uh, just to simplify it, again, I'm going to go ahead and just use my brush. So let's go ahead and get rid of some of this patch area. And again, I inadvertently grab too much. Let's set that. There we go. So that gets rid of that complex corners and stuff because that was kind of hard for it to kind of understand and fill in. So let's go back again, fill hole. Uh, let's not choose both of them. Let's just get this bottom flat one first. So let's uh, say that one, deselect. 
which basically leaves us just this top one and just use the tangent to do that. All right, that looks good. All right, so now let's go ahead and do the same thing, fill a hole. So we should only have one selection here. And let's take a look at that. And tangent, like we did on the first one, obviously is not where we want to be. Uh, that makes a huge bulge in that area. We want to go, let's try linear. So let's just step down the list here. Except that. That disappeared. Is it still there? It's still there. It filled that area. It's nice, smooth mesh across there. All right, so let's go ahead and accept that one. There we go. That looks pretty good. So now let's just, uh, again, we have, you know, to turn from a surface, surface uh, feature into a solid construction feature. All right, so we don't want that to be a construction. Let's go ahead and tell that to toggle design. We want that to be a solid body. So now it's a solid body. And we can come over here and do it again, optimize it. So once we optimize it, you'll see a couple things happen here. All right, so once I optimize, I can probably get rid of that little patch area. And that looks, I think I can get rid of that one. Oops, yeah, if I get rid of that one, it's going to be that tangent again. So let's leave that as linear. All right, so that looks pretty good. All right, so let's uh, take a peek at some of the other things we have over here, uh, like these little these little surface painting uh, uh, rainbow looking icons. All right, so we have an automatic and a, a manual. Automatic, you can just go ahead and just pick the geometry. So what it's going to do is try to go through, and uh, if I hit the F1 over this button, it'll bring up the help file, so you can see the little color thing here. All right, so as we're looking at it, what it does is it actually creates some surface bodies which are solids, like uh, like a planar planar face. So actually what it did is created a planar face out of that, the cylindrical things right here. Uh, so you can go let it go through and automatically do that, or let's get back into here. You can manually pick some geometry. Uh, so for example, uh, maybe for some reason I want to, oh, let's, let's say we need a, we've got an engineering change, we have to put a boss on this surface. So I come over here and uh, accept that. And that will actually now let me grab that and tell it to be a planar face. All right, so there's a uh, planar face there. Maybe, for example, on this one, we need to uh, replicate this as a cylinder. Uh, so again, I'm going to do a manual. I'm going to come over here, give it a different color. Let's make it green and paint that around here. There we go. That looks good. And I want that to not be planar. I want this one to be cylindrical. So I'm going to recreate, uh, take those prismatic geometry and make a, a solid surface out of it. And the last thing I'll do, let's go manually uh, paint this top face. There we go. Tell that surface to now be a planar again, and that's going to, oh, not that orientation. I'm not sure what I did there. I wanted to just cap that off, but I uh, might have done something wrong here. Uh, but we can actually take those and trim them. You notice we have our blue surf trim tools, and if I want to maybe just cap that off, uh, we can do that. Maybe, you know, extend some surfaces, replace spaces. Uh, those capabilities are available now. Uh, but uh, what I want to do is create another boss here. So let's go here. And if I just start creating geometry on the, on the fly here, which I will do first off. So let's just, yeah, that looks good. And now let's extrude that. Chain. That up. All right, so what that just did is blended and created this part of this. So if I try to come over here and put a chamfer on that, and you notice I can't because what this actually just did is created this as mesh body. All right, so if I wanted to create other features on there, I could. But what I have to do is actually come over here and do a multi body. So I'll add a body, and now if I create this as an extrusion, Oops, went the wrong way. I want to go up. So I want to do that again. 
to go up 0.375. Uh, now, if I want to put a chamfer on the top of this, I can. And uh, let's go ahead and do some synchronous tools. Let's go ahead and position this. Dimension correctly. There you go. Make that five and just do horizontal vertical. Oh, that's more far, far, horizontal vertical. Let's find the center of that and move it to the center of that. There we go. Keep that in line. And there we have it. Two separate bodies. So now we just come over here and say let's union these together. So let's uh, union that and that. And you notice we get an error. So what we have to do first is convert this. So you can't mesh, or excuse me, union a mesh body with a solid body. So what I would do to the design body that just created, uh, I would say convert to mesh body. All right, so that will create a mesh body. I'll just set the options here, how fine a resolution I want. Uh, you come over here and do custom. You know, if you want it to be really, really uh, super smooth. You can do that. There we go. So now that has the same type of icon on it. Now look what happens when I do a union between that and that and accept it. No errors. All right. So let me get rid of these surfaces. And uh, obviously now uh, if I go back into reverse engineering and uh, do an automatic, you notice um, we can actually pick individual surface bodies from the solids now and recreate those. So again, this is a mesh body. If I turn the shading back off, you can see the boss that I have just created now is a mesh body with the other one. Uh, so for the most part, this is ready to be saved as an SPL uh, to be printed. Uh, but I already have one saved, and I don't have this boss on it, and I didn't cap this off. Uh, so let's go ahead and open that one up. All right, so what you would typically do is save your STL out, bring it into your 3D printer. Uh, some other things just to point out, we do have some 3D print options inside of Solid Edge directly, but this doesn't work with our Mark Forge printer. And I keep mentioning Mark Forge, and uh, if you go to our website, uh, swooshtech.com, uh, Mark Forge, uh, and just go through, uh, we have several different versions. Uh, we have the uh, Mark X, uh, the Onyx and the Metal X. Uh, so these all machines print very similar. Uh, it's just what they do is different. So here's a the, the metal printer. So it looks almost identical to the nylon plastic printer. Uh, so uh, I'll uh, in the second step, I'll show you how to set our machine up and get it running, and I'll show you the part being run. And once it's done, I'll show you uh, final product. All right, so that's uh, what I'm referring to when we talk about Mark Forge. So let's take a look at it. It's pretty interesting technology. Uh, but the 3D print, if you don't have a 3D printer, you can, for example, go out here and order online. So I can come over here and uh, agree with the statement, let it do its thing, and it's going to load the file into here. So it's doing something right now. There it goes. So once this is loaded in here, uh, we have some options here on the right. You'll see this change. Uh, we're going to have some options to pick different types of materials or different print services. Uh, maybe this metal, uh, if you wanted just to say that this is going to be plastic, you can say just look for all the people that can do plastic parts, and obviously you see some prices here, um, different vendors, and if you want to just go with these guys, just say select, and it creates a report, and obviously give me credit card information, and in a few days, you have a 3D printed part coming to you. Uh, I'm not really worried about that because, again, I have my own 3D printer here. So let's get back out. And, uh, again, I would typically just come over here, say file, save as, tell it what type of format, and all 3D printers read a stereolithography file. So STL, you want to give us some options here to look at the resolution. Again, you can adjust it if I just want to say fine. Tell it what type of inches or millimeters. Uh, we're going to stick with inches because that's the template that I brought it into. Uh, then you basically just say save. All right, so we're good there. Oh, no, it's not. I want to overwrite it. So let's go and now switch over to my Iger software. All right, so let's switch over to Iger. 
All right, so I already have it loaded up, so uh, we're in Iger, and then, again, this is the software. Uh, it's a web-based software that comes with the Mark Forge printer. So this is how and where we set up slices. As I mentioned, this is a carbon fiber printer. So what I'm gonna, I already have a job folder set up for this, so you can see we have several hundreds, if not a thousand parts in here already, with many job folders. So I'm going to go into this folder, and let's add, import our SDL. Right, so let's go... Remember, there it is. And this is the one I already have saved for Iger with the missing pocket. And let's open that up. All right, so Iger is going to import it into our software. Uh, and it always wants to use millimeters. So you can see we're in a different format than what I designed it in. So what I would do is come over here and use advanced settings, tell it what type of um, template and we're going to go imperial and of course now it's a lot larger than it was previously and it's telling me right now it doesn't actually fit the, fit the print uh, so you notice we have the missing pocket what we need to do is do some uh, rotation so this is not the orientation we want alright so the z-axis we're going to have to have some support material to be able to print this so it's going to print a ton of support material to get it to that. So what we want to do is, uh, first off, use some orientation tools here. Uh, we come over here and do some manual rotations. Uh, so let's go ahead and flip it over first off. So let's do that. Uh, let's go ahead and rotate it in this orientation. And once we do that, you notice it changes from that red color into uh, this the gray color that, we're, that will tell us that, hey, we're good to go. All right, so if I wanted to... Go ahead and now position this uh, in here. Uh, we, we can. I'm just going to leave it at the base default middle location. That looks pretty good. All right, so now it's a matter of telling it uh, what type of wall thickness or if we're going to use fiber. And we will use fiber. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn on fiber and just look through the list here. We have carbon fiber, Kevlar, fiberglass, and high strength, high temperature fiberglass. For this one, we're, look, we're looking for stiffness. We're not really worried about uh, abrasion resistance, uh, but we do need stiffness. So I'm going to say carbon fiber for this one. And we can tell it how many carbon fiber layers we want to put. I'm just going to say zero, because what I'm going to do is actually go into the next step and define where I want the layers to be specific and what type of orientation we want. Uh, do we want it isotropic? So in this scenario, isotropic would basically have it... Uh, oriented in multiple orientations, so uh, 0, uh, 90, 180, 270, uh, or any orientation you really want. Uh, or we can have concentric, which basically will just basically make a ring around the profile as many times as you can or as many times as you tell it. All right, so we're going to go probably concentric. Uh, this one, we're not really worried about stresses in multiple orientations. Uh, we're looking at a force uh, pretty much on this one face. And we just need that step just to accommodate that. All right, so let's uh, go ahead and tell how many walls we want. I'm going to go bump up the walls here. I'm going to say roof and layers. Uh, let's make this part uh, go eight. And, and the wall layers, let's bump this up to four. That looks pretty good. All right, so here we go. Save. And it's going to go through and do its slicing. If this takes too long, uh, I'll uh, edit the video and skip forward. So it looks like it's going pretty quick. Pretty simple geometry. All right, so once it's done uh, optimizing supports, and I'll explain what that means uh, in, the, in a second. So we have the build support. And on the inside, we actually have the ability to print this part hollow, uh, which, first off, saves material. Uh, second part, it... Uh, the, the strength is actually just as great it is if it's solid, so you're not wasting material, and it's not taking extra time to actually print. So let's go ahead and uh, let us do its thing. So I'm going to switch back over to Solid Edge while it's doing that, and I have a couple of little fun things to look at. Uh, so obviously this is for work, but uh, for those who are kind of just uh, hobbyists, you know, maybe you just want something uh, to play with. So outside of Solid Edge, back in our 
browser here, we have a lot of different uh, places to grab models from. Uh, we got a little spaceship here, Rick and Morty spaceship, and of course, uh, Thingverse, which has just tons of things for uh, 3D printing. These are all open source, uh, available for free downloads. Uh, another one I use is GrabCAD. So there's tons of uh, open stuff there to be able to download and work with in multiple formats. These are already STLs. All right, so I can't really get the previous versions do much with them, but now we can merge these together. So let's go over to my RNN folder. So I got a couple of uh, parts already converted. So here is here is the Rick. Uh, model that I just brought in and I already say that it has a solid edge part and again this is a mesh body you can see design mesh body and uh, the, you know again we're, we're in synchronous so the ability to use the steering wheel uh, so this was kind of brought in way away from the port system so again we have the ability to use our uh, solid edge synchronous to kind of position these where we want good. that looks good and let's go ahead and open it up Open up the other model. Get the, let go of the steering wheel. It's a little slower than working with prismatic shapes again because this this one is a really heavy mesh model. Um, so I can get to turn that shading on. You notice if I really slow trying to represent that mesh because this one is just 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 millions of individual triangles right so pretty heavy mesh but the heavier the mesh obviously the smoother the files going to be right, so we're working there let's go and open up the other one so the spaceship nope oh, that's not what i wanted that one's already done let's go and show you what i'm going to do let's just open up that spaceship by itself All right, so there's the uh, spaceship and again. This one is showing you again a mesh body. So we save that. All right, so we have the two files independently. We've got Rick and the spaceship. Well, how do we get these together? All right, so just like Solid Edge, uh, we have the ability uh, with solid parts to come over and actually insert our copies. Uh, so what I'm going to do is insert the Rick model into the uh, spaceship model. And we want to go ahead and copy that instruction. If I do it as a solid uh, body, uh, it's basically going to merge these together immediately. And basically, you uh, notice what we have to do here is some scaling. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and just leave the instruction defaults and bring that in. I said, notice it's a construction body. Let's finish that off. All right, be in a separate model. Let's go ahead and move that over. And something again new to SD10, it is. Oops, oh, I did not do that completely correctly. Let me uh, pop back over to Iger. All right, it's done in Iger, so let me. Uh, let me undo that, and then I'll switch back to Iger and show you some stuff while it's undoing the solid edge. Do the insert, you know, insert part copy, and let's just do that real quick. Want to switch back over? Oh, I, I just told you to copy its construction. I think I switched it to a design body, so I was not paying attention. That that is, that is my uh, mistake. Yeah, I'll just leave it as a construction body. There we go. So now it's uh, purple means it's construction body. So. That was my mistake, and as I was going to do a while ago, go ahead and move this over and scale that ship up. That's good for now. So we do have a new command, and just again, just not part of just reverse engineering. This will work with any body that's inside of the solid edge model. All right, so we have here a scale body option. We want to take this geometry and tell it to scale. 
and uh, want to go to about two and a half. And that looks, that looks pretty good. And of course, I just need to move this model over a little bit more. I don't want to scale it, I just want to move it. Get my steering wheel back out here. And move this outside of here. And we want to print this at the same time. And if you want this to be you know, individual individual models, you can print these just like this, and it be two individual models. Uh, but maybe you want to print this on a face. So let's go ahead and take this and create a face. Move that slightly over again. All right, so let's go create a face. So we'll do as I did previously. Maybe I want to add some chamfers and we'll position this afterwards without it being part of the actual design body. So what we're going to do is create a new body. I'm going to tell it to be the base. And we want to add body. Call just say base. It doesn't really matter what we're calling it because we're going to merge them together once we're done. Uh, let's go ahead and just create the base underneath here. That should work. Now let's extrude our base down, keep it solid. And again, you notice know, the scale of this. I didn't really. Uh, we are working with objects like this, it's, they're not accurate. When you got a mesh, there's really no way to actually make incredibly accurate mesh. So that's why uh, mesh models typically have never been brought into solid edge. All right, so I have a base here, and if I wanted to, you know, add a chamfer, that looks good. Um, now let's just do one more little thing. Let's move this body back just a just a hair, so it's sitting on the base. Then once we're done, all we have to do is come over here and unite these all together, and then we have a solid model to export and print to. All right, so let's uh, do that. Let's go back under here to do a unite union. All right, so let's go ahead and union. Oh. I uh, forgot to do a step here. Remember, then this base I created as a solid. Forgot to do this extra step to convert to mesh. That's fine. Now let's go ahead and bring in these two together. This. With the base. And give it a second. Go. And the last step is obviously to do the same thing. Union that. So once that's merged together, you notice all these parts will basically be uh, features will be done and they'll kind of just merge together. So we can, I just have one. Uh, there we have our solid SDL ready to go out. Uh, file save as. STL. Finish. So now it's going to translate that parasol out. Or excuse me, the STL. So that's ready to go. All right, so let's go uh, switch back to Iger to show you how we finish this up. All right, so now that we have uh, the part, let's go take a look at the internal view. All right, so if you want to look at uh, the actual object, you can slice through here uh, to see the individual layers that it's actually going to end up creating. Uh, what I want to do is, again, remember I, I said we want to add some carbon fiber. There's no carbon fiber currently in here, so let's just, uh, that's where it typically would be. But I told you I was going to add my own, oops, there we go. So no carbon fiber. And when we have this option here, we're going to go in to, uh, layers. Let's just kind of drag a layer so we can kind of tell it where to stop. We want to miss some things here. We want to go ahead and let's do a layer right here. And we're going to say use carbon fiber, concentric, 
how many concentric rings that we want. Let's go and let's bump this up to, we'll probably only do one, so we'll try to add as many as we can. Let's go just type in 20. It'll do as many as it can. Uh, if it can't do it, it'll just stop wherever it will and do its thing. So now we want to do concentric uh, carbon fiber, create a group. This up a little bit so you can see what's going on there. And as these blue things are starting to populate in here, you'll see that's actually the fiber layers. And I don't really need uh, from layer roughly 70 to 80. So what we're going to do is kind of just grab this. And I only need probably one layer here. So 149 to 150. So it's going to get rid of all the other layers that I've created and create this one carbon fiber layer here. That looks good. All right, so uh, we, if you want to look at the uh, 2D visibility now, it's going to basically, we can step through. I'm just using my um, arrow keys now to walk through. And what you see there is those are the supports underneath it that are going to be printed. And once we get up into the solid body, there we're getting into the neck, and there we're starting to get into the actual mesh of the geometry. And as I get closer to this, you'll see uh, down here at the bottom, we're getting close to our carbon fiber layer. And there is our carbon fiber layer. So if you want to uh, adjust this, you, you could right now. Because uh, we're looking at um, carbon fiber uh, material costs. Uh, we're looking at a total of $22 for this entire part. Which is not bad. Uh, I believe it was considerably more to have machined out aluminum. All right, so we're, we're done. Let's go ahead and just save it. And and hit print. All right, so it shows you if I zoom out a little bit, it actually shows you the board inside of the printer. Again, so this is the uh, Mark uh, Mark II that actually has all the filaments and the tonics. So let's take a look at the position out of it. Uh, if you know if we wanted to add another part, we can come over here and just. Add a duplicate carbon fiber part of this one. Come over here and say, let's uh, make two of those. And there we have two of them here. Right. And uh, looking at the cost, then basically I double the cost because I'm doing two of them from 22 to 45 roughly. Uh, but uh, that's ready to go. So we don't really need to just run one at a time for now. And that's what we wanted. And just a matter of telling it, go find the printer. The printer is online, so I'll just take a look at it. It tells me that it's uh, currently not up to temp. Uh, I got Onyx loaded in here, and I got 38.11 uh, centimeter cubic of carbon fiber left. All right, so it tells me how much material is in the printer uh, and if it's ready to go, which it is. So I would just go over here and say print, and uh, let's go ahead and just, I'll just add it to Q. Uh, basically, that means when I walk to the printer, it will be set up and ready to go. All right, so keep an eye out for the second video that goes along with this and what we're going to be talking about, uh, the Mark Forge printer, uh, getting this in there and run, and uh, we'll show those steps. All right, so again, thanks, guys, for uh, taking a look at uh, what we have to offer in Solid and SC10. Uh, you know, again, uh, the reverse engineering, uh, pretty Pretty good stuff to be able to work with STLs uh, finally. Uh, hopefully, you know, next review releases, uh, there'll be some more ability to, uh, to work with STLs. Uh, so, again, thanks again. And uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us at uh, Swoosh Technologies. All right. Bye. Thanks, folks.